G'day guys, in today's episode we're gonna be talking about exhaust gas temperatures, also known as EGTs. These are perhaps some of the most important pieces of data for modern day turbo diesel four wheel drives, particularly for those who have a modified vehicle, tow heavy loads or drive in harsh conditions. Today we're gonna to be talking about what EGTs are, how to read them, what they represent, and how to install an EGT gauge into your 200 series Land Cruiser. So today we will be doing a full installation walkthrough on how I went about installing twin digital EGT gauges into my 200 series Land Cruiser. So if you're interested in that, I will stick some timelines down in the description below and you can skip straight to that. Otherwise, let's get straight on to talking about EGTs. So what are EGTs or exhaust gas temperatures? Simply put, it's the temperature measurement from the exhaust gases exiting the combustion chamber inside the engine. Now the EGT will vary from engine to engine and also depend heavily about where the temperature probe is located on the vehicle. So now there are several places that you can mount the temperature probe for an EGT gauge and this includes pre-turbo, immediately after the turbo or most commonly in the dump pipe of the exhaust. So that begs the question, why is the temperature coming from these gases so important and how can it help us when driving the vehicle? So the exhaust gas temperatures represent the temperature from within the combustion chamber of each of the cylinders from the engine. Now please note I do use a representation. Those gases coming from those combustion chambers will begin to cool immediately after exiting and the EGT or an EGT gauge that we mount inside the vehicle will reflect that rise and fall in those temperatures. Now the exhaust gas temperatures will increase and decrease for numerous reasons. This can be as simple as a harsh acceleration on the highway, just accelerating off from a set of traffic lights, towing a heavy load, towing up a steep hill, or even as simple as driving into a headwind. The ability to mount gauges inside the vehicle will give the driver a real-time display of what's going on inside the engine and may also allow us to alter our driving style just to optimise the safety and benefit the longevity of the engine. Now later on in this video, I'm also gonna talk about some of the normal ranges to be looking for when driving these vehicles and what's a little bit too high and also what's a little bit too low. So stay tuned to the end and we'll talk about that. These temperatures can be measured in many different varieties and formats. For example, in my old GU Patrol, I used a 52 mil analog gauge to record the temperatures. Now some gauges like the Red Arc system offer multiple data fields within the same unit. So those who are looking for a lot of information for a limited amount of space, there's something that you can definitely consider. Now for my Land Cruiser here, I chose to go with twin digital uh, displays and we'll go over how I've mounted them in just a moment. So please note this is a 2014 Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series, which often referred to as a pre-facelift version. This means that this engine and this vehicle does not come with a DPF or a diesel particular filter and therefore has no way of measuring the EGTs from factory. With the DPF and the later versions, you, there are multiple sensors throughout the exhaust system and there are ways to uh, get those displays and those measurements from the factory unit. Now in the case of the 200 series Land Cruiser, we're running a 4.5 litre V8 twin turbo diesel. This is designed so that we have a bank of four cylinders, one on each side of the engine, and the gases from each of those four cylinders will go through a single turbo, again, one on each side of the engine. Immediately after each of those turbos, we have the dump pipes of the exhaust and then the exhaust system throughout the rest of the vehicle. Now, because we have two header pipes or two dump pipes on this vehicle, I've decided to mount twin digital displays just after the turbo. This will allow us to monitor both sides of the engine, but however, please note it's not necessary to mount two. One will suffice as the temperatures are very, very similar. Now personally, I'm very particular about the ergonomics and the layout of my dash and my center console within my vehicle. And I was looking for something that was gonna neatly fit inside the uh, factory system without looking out of place. Now despite extensive searching, I was unable to find a, a gauge that would look factory inside this 200 series Land Cruiser. I'm not really a fan of the 52 mil gauges as I'm unable to mount that into the pillar pod on this vehicle as we do have curtain airbags and also audio equipment mounted in this model. I'm not a fan of mounting on top of the center console either, as again, we also have audio equipment present there. So I turned to looking for a tidy dual digital display. Now, after hours of searching, I finally found a unit that I liked from a company called Tem Tech Controls, located in Victoria. They make these great little units with various different options available, different backlit colors, and also things like audible alarms that you can mount up separately as well, if that's something that you want. So I ordered two of these little units, and I still had to come up with somewhere to mount them inside the factory dash. 
So I decided to use a space that was currently wasted and not utilized, and that is of course the factory ashtray. In this vehicle, the ashtray sits nice and low in the center console and something that I never, never use. So I managed to remove the ashtray and figured out I could fabricate a bracket here to mount these twin displays. Now the only drawback about mounting these units down low in the ashtray area is that it's not in your direct line of sight up top near your windscreen. Now although for these gauges you often only use them at a glance, if this is something that concerns you, you could perhaps look at getting one of those audible alarms pre-programmed so that if the temperature were to increase beyond something that you're happy with, it would make an audible alarm without having to physically view the, the unit. So let's head back to the shed and I'll show you how I designed and fabricated these brackets from scratch using basic tools. So in order to show this process, I've sped up the footage up four times in sections. I'll mark the footage that has been sped up with a 4x text. However, if you wish to watch these sections in normal time, hit the settings button on this video and select the playback speed. If you change this to 0.25x during these clips, it will play at normal speed. Now don't forget to turn on closed captions as well, so that you can read what I'm saying. So to start this process, I created a template from a piece of cardboard using the dimensions from the front of the ashtray. I copied this template onto a piece of a 3mm black acrylic. Now this acrylic was just purchased off eBay in a small quantity and the link will be in the description below. Once the template was copied across, I used a jigsaw with a fine blade to cut the shape out. The two tabs attached to the main face panel is what I have designed to be attached to the factory plastic around the ashtray assembly. Now acrylic is a soft and easy material to work with, so I was able to clean up and straighten the edges with a regular cutting disc on an angle grinder. I've also used this just to round some of the face panel edges. Now in order to attach the panel to the factory plastics in the console, I had to bend the two tabs a little over 90 degrees. To do this, it was as simple as peeling off just enough of the protective wrapping and placing two pieces of tube steel under and on top of the line where the bend is desired. This enables us to focus the heat on the area we want and to create a tight bend. I applied heat using a 240 volt heat gun and move this back and forward over the two tabs. Checking this during the process, I turn over the piece of acrylic to evenly distribute this heat. Try not to overheat the acrylic as it will result in bubbles forming in the material. Again, I've used one of the tube pieces to assist with creating a tight corner and pushed down into the bench with my left thumb. And the end result turned out quite well. It was now time to remove the ashtray from the vehicle and start disassembling the center console. The soft kick panels on either side can be removed by simply pulling outwards and the two side plastic trims are removed by unscrewing a single bolt and then pulling outwards and towards the back of the vehicle. Once these are removed, the trims surrounding the ashtray can be removed by hand, but keeping in mind that the electronics including the 12 volt plugs and the ashtray light wires will still be attached. Disconnecting these plugs, we can then take the trim over to the bench and test fit our bracket. The bracket fits well into the location, and we can see here how the two tabs can be used to mount onto the existing plastic sections of the factory trim. It's a good idea to quickly test fit the unit in the vehicle, just to ensure you're happy with the angle of the panel. It's now time to start getting our digital temperature displays. We can see that the unit has four prongs facing towards the display side. This will help to lock the units into the bracket once they've been pressed in. So we need to measure the width and the height of the unit. Once we have these measurements, we can then measure the final dimensions of the bracket to ensure we get both the units centered and symmetrical. Once we have marked up the back of the unit, we can drill into the proposed cutouts to create room to insert the jigsaw blade and cut away the centers. Now we can see here that the cutouts are too small and I've done this to ensure a tight fit and it's definitely better than cutting them too large. So it's onto filing and more filing. This does take some time, however it ensures a perfect tight fit. Now when filing the unit and also test fitting the displays, be gentle with the acrylic. It won't take much pressure for this bracket to snap and essentially would mean starting over again. With a successful and tight test fit, I'm happy that we can start to bolt the bracket onto the plastic trims. The bracket will be supported by small bolts and only needs to be tightened by hand with the socket as the soft materials risk breaking with over tightening. So 
So now that we had that bracket fabricated up and it fitted nicely within the center console, it was now time to get onto matching those temperature probes into the exhaust and wiring the units up. So it's onto getting access to the exhaust dump pipes. With the wheel removed, the rear inner plastic guards can be removed to gain access to the exhaust. Now I am running an aftermarket exhaust on this vehicle, which means that I already had an MPT thread fitted to the exhaust dump by Manta, the exhaust fabricator. If you want more detail on this exhaust, check out my install video where I talk about how to remove and reinstall the exhaust. If you are running a factory exhaust, the temperature kits from Temtech also do come with a bung that can be welded onto your factory system. The only trouble I had here was the MPT fitting supplied by Temtech were not the same size as supplied by Manta. A quick trip to my local hydraulic shop and I had my required adapters. Now fitting the temperature probes can be difficult and slow, but once you have that thread started, it's just a matter of tightening it up and running the braided wires to the engine bay. It was time to refit the guards and wheels and do the same to the driver's side. Once the wires are in the engine bay, I used a length of fencing wire to tape the wires to provide rigidity when pushing them through the grommets in the firewall. In my case, I also had to remove my oil catch can on the driver's side and the secondary fuel filter on the passenger side. Once you have the wire pushed through a little, it's back onto the interior of the vehicle and we are removing the kick panels above the footwells. Grabbing the fencing wire from inside the vehicle, we can pull the cables up into the vehicle and begin to route them around the factory equipment, ensuring that they are not going to affect any other equipment. Once you have both sides routed through the vehicle and up behind the ashtray plastic trim, it's now time to start looking for a 12 volt power source. We are looking for something that provides 12 volt when the vehicle or accessories is on, however it turns off when the vehicle is off. These units consume very little power, so I managed to splice into existing 12 volt wiring from the factory cigarette plugs. The units from Temtech are provided with easy and self-explanatory diagrams and instructions. The process to wire up these controls is very easy. The power, positive and negative, are attached to their corresponding connections, unlike the red and yellow wire from the thermo sensors attached to the probes. Four wires is all it takes, and these units are good to go. Once we have these units wired up, it's time to reinstall the plugs onto the 12 volt cigarette ports and replace the plastic trim to ensure no wires are damaged or pinched. We then start to reassemble the center console in the reverse manner of taking it apart. The last thing for us to do is to bundle and secure any of the remaining wires from the thermo sensors and tie it out of the way. We can then reinstall our kick panels and we are ready to take them out for a test. So there we have it guys, that is how I went about mounting these twin digital gauges inside the factory console of my 200 series Land Cruiser. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out overall. Again, let's just note here as well, we do not need to fit twin gauges. One will suffice as you will find that the two temperatures will be fairly close together. However, if you want to, you can fit two there and you can see the little variance between them. So this leaves us with two questions. Why do we need EGT gauges and how do we read them? And what are some of the safe and normal operating temperatures we should be looking for? And what is getting up to the upper limit where we should be altering our driving style? So talking about exhaust gas temperatures, specifically about mounting gauges to read them, begs the question as to why manufacturers don't fit them from factory and why they're so important for us four-wheel drivers. Now generally as four-wheel drivers, tourers and caravanners, we have a habit of modifying our vehicles to improve the efficiency of a specific task. So this includes things like uh, increasing the height of our suspension, fitting bigger tires, adding weight in the form of bull bars, batteries, winches and storage, and also changing the aerodynamics of the vehicle by adding things like spotlights and roof racks. This all has an effect on the vehicle, how it performs, and also the amount of load that's placed onto the engine. So although these things were considered by the manufacturer at time of design, the vehicle just simply isn't optimized for these aftermarket modifications. For example, this vehicle here, which is fairly modified towing a heavy load, say a three ton caravan up a steep hill, is going to handle and react very differently to a stock Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series unladen. So this being said, mounting exhaust gas temperature gauges inside the vehicle gives us the drivers the ability to see what's going on in the engine and the result of that heavy load in real time and also enables us to alter our driving style if things were getting a little bit too hot and preferably before something goes wrong. So now that we understand why we fit these gauges and why we want to monitor these exhaust gas temperatures, the next question is what sort of normal operating temperature should we be looking for and what should we be alarmed about or concerned for? 
Now, a normal operating temperature is gonna be hard to de uh, determine or give a specific number to every vehicle, as there's so many variables that will affect the temperature and the temperature reading. The size, capacity, design, and layout of your engine will determine how hot it gets and how hot it should be running at its optimal efficiency, and also the position of that temperature probe will have a significant impact on the temperature reading. So in the case of my Land Cruiser here, I have mounted that temperature probe in probably one of the most common locations, and that is on that dump pipe after the turbo. Now generally, as a rule of thumb, this is going to indicate a temperature about 150 to 200 degrees Celsius, less than the gases than they were in the combustion chamber. So we can see there that there is a significant drop of temperature through just from the uh, combustion chamber there down to that location where the probe is mounted. So this being said, the maximum exhaust gas temperatures I want to be seeing in my vehicle on these gauges is around the 550 degrees Celsius mark. This is going to indicate that the combustion chamber is running at about 700 to 750 degrees. Now temperatures of 550 degrees is something you only want to see temporarily and something you should not be driving around with for an extended period of time. If you do fit some of these gauges to your vehicle, you might be surprised how quickly those temperatures can increase with the environmental considerations and also modified vehicles and how this might alter and affect the style of your driving to try and keep those temperatures down. Now for extended periods of time, you really don't want to be seeing temperatures above the 450 mark. Although that's sell well and truly in its safe bark, having temperatures at, uh, at 450 degrees or around that mark for a long period of time can be wearing on the engine. So a normal range is somewhere between 200 and 400 degrees Celsius. However, this is significantly influenced by the environmental conditions and your vehicle setup. Now fitting an EGT gauge to your vehicle not only provides the benefit for normal driving conditions and alerting you to when your driving is getting a little bit too much, but it also gives you a good indication as to when to switch the vehicle off. When you're driving in heavy load applications or for long periods of time, you want to make sure you give the turbos adequate time to cool down to prevent any oil baking onto the turbo bearings or the oil feed lines. This is going to increase the performance and the longevity of your turbos and just overall be a little bit healthier. And there's also the reason that a little while back, something that's called turbo timers used to be quite popular, which allowed you to leave the vehicle, lock it and walk away. Now, although turbo timers aren't quite uh, so popular these days and there are some legality issues and insurance issues around them, having EGT gauges will allow you to monitor the temperatures and switch the vehicle off at a required rate. Now again, specific temperatures will vary from engine to engine. However, on this Land Cruiser 200 series, we're looking at about the 200 degree mark. I generally sit in the car and wait for it to cool down to about the 190 degree mark before cooling it off. And that gives you turbos an adequate time to cool down and be safe for shut off. So there we have it guys. I hope today's video has given you a bit of an idea about the role that exhaust gas temperatures play in our vehicles. Having a gauge inside the vehicle and monitoring these temperatures is perhaps one of the most helpful pieces of data we can have inside the cab, particularly when taking these vehicles a little bit further than stock. Now again, whether or not digital or analog, you do not have to mount dual gauges. A single gauge will suffice for these big V8 turbo diesels. And it's a good idea to have just about to ensure that you're keeping that vehicle in a nice safe range. So guys, another thing to keep in consideration is the fact that every vehicle is going to be slightly different. Whether it be the way the vehicle is modified, the way the vehicle is used and if it tows something, the location of that temperature probe or just the environmental conditions, the EGK, EGT gauge will differ from vehicle to vehicle. What you will be able to do, however, is get a bit of an understanding about where your normal range is in your vehicle and it's also going to provide information if there's something were to go wrong well and truly before the factory gauges. So guys, I've hoped you've enjoyed today's video. If you want to purchase any of the products that I've used in the video, check out the link in the description below. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching again, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.